Hi, in this video we'll talk about the improvement of the 1-in-1 now PoE standard. This is the new version and this is the old version. If you put these two together, you will find the new version is a little bit longer than the old version. The reason we need to make this new version to become longer is because we need to adapt to this to make CAT5 your CAT6 Ethernet cable. It's, you can see the head of this cable is it's a little bit longer than the manual crank. For the old version, you can connect this one to the PoE standard, but part of this section will be let out, so the water may still sneak it into the PoE standard if you're using the Primate Fab Optic, Primate Cat5 UK6 Ethernet cable. Now let's just make a quick test for the new version. Let's remove the connector and the kit and also the rubber. And pass through the gramp and make the connection. You can see, after we connect everything, we just need to place this rubber and all the, the whole connector has been high inside of the PoE standard. It will achieve the IP67 great waterproof rate. But also, as we always mention, always new, use this tool to fasten the, the body and the grant. Otherwise, it cannot achieve IP67 waterproof rate. So this is the key. No matter you are using the old version or new version, you need to use the, uh, to this wrench to fasten the both sides to make sure the water is not snagged into the PoE standard. Okay, the second improvement is about the mounting option. You see, for the old version, basically there's no much mounting option. You just need to using the two cable to hold the PoE standard. But for the new version, the first option is we can have the wall mount like this one. We can mount this bracket to the wall and place this inside, so it will be okay. The second option is about dim ray mount, like this. Also the same bracket, but now we need to add this dim ray mount accessory. Let's just add this. After that, we, okay. Now we also can place this media the extender. Then we can mount this extender to the dim rate. There's one more mounting option. Let me remove this too. It's a, a call about snap and combine, like this. So that would be it. If you have more than two, you can snap and combine all the PoE standard to light up. So you may wonder why we need to have the dim ray mount and the snap and combine. Yes, it's okay, it's easy to understand we need the raw mount, but why need these two? The reason is because these two PoE standard, when they're working together, we can have about 1,000 feet, 1,000 feet continue run between these two. That means we can place the first one just in the rock. So you may need the rock mount, right? and place the second one outside the box. You also may need to thin ray mount. When you place it in the rock, you may need to have the snap and combine to light up, then you can place on the rock. And when you place this thing to the close enclosure, you, make, you can use the thin ray mount. That's the reason why we have this new mounting option adding to this new version. The last thing is about the, using the PoE standard to repeat the data network. We make some of the uh, case recently, they're not going to work with the, like the PoE camera or PoE access point. Basically, they just want to repeat the data like the network for another router. In this case, let's say we, you still need to use the PoE injector. That's the only way to send the power, PoE injector or PoE switch, to send the power to your PoE standard. So basically, you need to place this PoE injector next, next to the first router. At the end, you also need to use this PoE splitter. Uh, it's easy to understand why we need the PoE injector, right? Because we need to inject the power. So uh, let's say this, Maybe it's more easy to understand. We don't need this one. Okay, we use two cable connect together. The maximum distance is about 1,000 feet. We need the PoE injector because we need to send the power to these two, right? Otherwise it will not work. They, they, there's no way for them to get the power from the external power supply. And 
but why we need the PoE splitter? Because they are always power handshaking. Even your edge device, it's another router, it doesn't need any power, but the PoE system requires power handshaking. So before this one, send the power to, to these two, PoE standard, it needs to detect and classify your edge device require the power. If you remove the PoE splitter, you just connect to the router to the PoE standard directory. If you detect the last one, the PoE, is, uh, your router doesn't require the power, so it will release, refuse to send the power. In this case, you add the PoE splitter at the end, so just next to the PoE standard, then it will find out this one needs the power, so you send the power, find inventory, these two get the power. All right. That's all for today's video. If you have any question, please post in comment section below. See you next time.